Bismillah Rahman Irahim. Luai Kayali, 1934-1978, Empathy for the Poor and Dispossessed of Syria. It not infrequently happens that when I am trying to understand more deeply the character and inner motivations of exemplary Muslims who have touched us through their compassion, their insight and their humility, that I find that they have come from a family and community background embedded in an adherence to Sufism, Tasawuf. This is the case of Syrian painter Luai Kayali, 1934-1978, who in the course of a short life created a masterly and moving series of studies of the poor and the dispossessed of the community of his time. His compassionate imagery continues to speak to our feelings for those who struggle today in the Middle East. Luai Kayali's father was deeply religious, as was his grandfather, who had close connections with sheikhs of his time and strongly influenced the spiritual growth of his grandson. When he was still a young child, his grandfather would take him to gatherings and lessons in religion at neighbourhood mosques, where he was taught to foster admirable personal traits and to aid the poor and the vulnerable. The family was of the Kayali clan, one of the biggest in Aleppo, which for generations had included many Sufi notables, religious scholars and jurists, and had his own Kayaliya tariqat with a Zawiya to its founder, Sheikh Abdal al-Jawad al-Kayali. Luai Kayali began his painting career in Aleppo in the early 1950s, successfully catering to the rich of society, undertaking portrait commissions and exhibiting still life and landscape paintings. After he had completed his art studies in Italy in 1961 and had settled in Damascus to teach, he continued to work and regularly exhibit in these genres. However, in the mid-1960s, he began using painting to convey the struggles of the poor and the miseries and terrors of those displaced by conflict. This change, no doubt, was generated by the social conscience, moral values and spiritual empathy instilled in him through his Sufi upbringing. At first, Kayali's emphasis was on reacting to the conflict which was escalating in the Middle East. In 1965, he painted a seminal dramatic large work, Then What?, depicting a group of Palestinian refugees convulsed in misery and despair. He continued to build on these themes, including a series of dramatic drawings of people traumatised by war, titled For the Sake of the Cause, which was sponsored by the Syrian government and exhibited in 1967 in Damascus and elsewhere in the country. The exhibit, however, received considerable criticism from those sceptical of Kayali's motivation in shifting from subjects fashionable in high society to those reflecting the socialist spirit, then prevailing politically. His work was also deemed excessively pessimistic. In depressed reaction to this and to the 1967 Six-Day War defeat, Kayali destroyed these works and stopped painting. In 1973, however, he resumed painting and entered a new phase during which he created many moving studies of the urban and coastal working poor. Most of these studies are of individuals working as street vendors. Most are boys or youths with a modest limited stock to sell. These were people who had nothing but their own energy to invest, not even in a modest street or market stall. A boy stands with a box of matches, with a tray of matches. This stock, 10 matchboxes, even today a box costs just a single rouble. Youthful sellers of socks display samples to passers-by. A young flute seller has a very few bamboo flutes in his bag, which he has probably made himself. A youth passes with a big basket of bread rolls. Youths display trays of toffee apples. Young newspaper sellers tout the latest edition. A young corn seller stands with just two cobs on his tray. A young flower seller has only a few daisies to sell. Boys sell chewing gum as well. Adult men are portrayed both as makers and sellers, oud players who make music on the streets or coffee houses. A broom maker whose workshop is the pavement. A turbaned farmer sells milk from a covered wooden pail still full. A street corn seller sits at his little brazier. A prayer bead seller is patiently stringing beads from a little bowl while awaiting a customer. He has just two strings to sell. 
A barber trims the hair of customers outdoors. Shoe signing was a common and accessible occupation for both boys and adults, just as car washing is today, and was the subject of a number of his studies. Unusually, even a woman shoe signer is portrayed. Both men and women also worked as lottery ticket sellers with just a few tickets to sell. While women are portrayed working on the streets to make a modest living, they are less in evidence than men or boys. Kayali portrays a forlorn young woman fig seller and a woman cheese vendor dozing beside an open wooden pail with her fresh, sparkling white blocks of cheese. All these people are determinedly and stoically striving to work for a living, as honest Muslims are bidden to do. Beggars are only portrayed twice by Kayali, a very young boy who has fallen asleep on the pavement, hungry and exhausted, his empty tin beside him, and an emaciated, exhausted man. Modest coffee or tea stalls were a refuge of rest and modest refreshment for the poor working the crowded city pavements and marketplaces. Kayali's studies show men drinking tea and playing dominoes and chess. The painter saw the constant fatigue and weariness of street folk as a subject and commentary in itself. He portrays boys and men asleep, sitting in tea house chairs, shoes shine boys asleep beside the gear on the pavement, and a man sitting and dozing next to his shoe shining gear ready to serve customers. A weary man is sleeping, sitting up against the street wall. A street sweeper slumbers beside his broom and scoop. His urban street portraits include a very telling one of a young mother standing, eyes closed in weariness, against a wall with a large boy baby in her arms and a heavy bag on her shoulder. An older woman is depicted wearily sitting down, resting on the pavement with her cloth bundle by her side. Women tenderly cradle their infants as they take a respite on the pavement. In a lighter vein, a very young boy is proudly driving home a homemade scooter, the handiwork of an elder brother, maybe. It's self-evocative of the fa fact that the poor do not have the luxury of buying off-the-shelf toys. Another is rolling a hoop made from the discarded rim of a bicycle wheel with a stick. Kayali's work addresses the people we pass by every day, people who are not often thought of as important as those deserving of attention. He compels us to notice them and to see that there is an inherent beauty in who they are and how they are, brothers and sisters of our own humanity. Through the underlying message of his images, his art became powerful, a statement of resistance, a portrait of struggle that cannot and should not be unseen. There are yet other supplement messages in the details of his studies. Behind the poverty is resilience, powered by a community shared religious devotion. The Sufi devotional emphasis on learning is reflected in studies of men, youths and women, absorbedly reading. Luai Kayali said he always found women inspirational. He admired their immense humanity, love and femininity, which he felt they showed without any reservation. He depicted a moving group of paintings to mothers at home, embracing, nursing and bathing their infants, doing the modest family laundry by hand, sitting, knitting clothes, dressmaking, mending a husband's shirt. Other studies are simply of a mother lying down, head on a simple pillow. There are also poignant portraits of grandmothers sitting alone, pensive, troubled. Such studies have never been done before in the Muslim world. In 1977, in a major exhibition in a state gallery in Damascus, Kayali was exposed to harsh attacks for depicting national struggles and patriotism through images of the common man. His choice of subject matter did not correspond to the way critics wanted the patriotic cause to be represented to the masses, claiming that he did not adhere to the ide idealized imagery through which national heroes should be represented. This was too much for Kayali, who decided to move to Italy, but he soon returned to Aleppo, only to die in 1978 in a tragic accident. His paintings of struggling and distressed humanity have created an emotional and pictorial baseline 
for other Syrian and Middle Eastern artists who continue to react to conflict and displacement through their work. His influence remains strong today.